Welcome back everybody and uh, welcome to the channel if it's your first time coming here. Uh, I have a really exciting video for you today. We are going to be weathering vehicles and I'm going to be painting up this Cargo 8 Ridge Hauler from Necromunda Ash Waste and I'm going to be using this as a piece of terrain uh, in my own gaming so that's why it's not got any crew or a gun. Um, I think it makes an excellent line of sight blocker, but I thought it would be an absolutely awesome vehicle to paint to demonstrate some key weathering skills and some key weathering procedures as well that we can apply to basically any tank. So if you're kind of thinking, oh no, I don't play Necromunda, I couldn't possibly watch this video, uh, all of these techniques can be translated onto Contemptors, uh, Dreadnoughts, Tanks, even Space Marines, even Tau, even, you know, any kind of vehicle you can think of, all of these techniques that we're going to use can be translated onto them as well. So let's talk about sub-assemblies. With this particular vehicle, um, I really thought it would be easier to be able to get to the model if I work in kind of three main parts, which is the main body of the vehicle, uh, the wheels that you just saw a moment ago, and then um, the, the container. The container is primed white because we're going to be painting it yellow. Everything else is going to be either black or in a grey. Uh, I would really recommend if you're going to be painting anything yellow, start from a yellow, sorry, start from a white base coat. So that I really recommend that. We're going to be using maize yellow. You've seen me use this before, especially if you follow me on Instagram. I use this a lot on Imperial Fist as well. And you can see here uh, that the maize yellow, the speed paint, goes really nicely through the airbrush. There's no thinner. Uh, it's just going straight through the airbrush. I've got it on a PSI of around 30, um, which is a little bit higher than I would usually run it at, but um, it works perfect for, for speed paints. So you can get, see here that it goes through really, really nicely as well. Uh, but it's rather bland at the moment, um, so we're going to need to add some shading in a moment to this. If you don't have an airbrush, all of these things can be done without an airbrush, uh, but I would just be using rattle cans instead. So if you got to this point and go, oh, now I'm going to switch the video off because he's used an airbrush, just use a yellow rattle can, simple. Uh, use a grey rattle can for the main body of the vehicle, simple. Uh, you won't get the shading like we're using here, as I'm using uh, leather brown and creating um, some nice contrast on our, our cargo container, uh, but you'll still be able to get the same general effect as well. Uh, so what you can see me here doing is I am uh, adding leather brown into the shadows. This is a great Imperial Fist uh, recipe if you are looking for one. You can see lots of people, and I've done it before, use pink in the shadows and overlap it with the yellow. But I think this is a really nice yellow uh, colour if you're looking for an alternative Imperial Fist kind of uh, scheme. Um, and I think that this also works really well when I'm going to use our... Um, kind of oils later on and our streaking effects later on as well. Uh, I'm using an unusual highlighting pattern, which is I'm highlight well, I'm shading from the top and then the highlights are at the bottom. Um, and this is just to emphasize the lines of the container. And we're going to use uniform gray, which is a fairly mid, mid uh, kind of lightish gray. And we're going to use this all over the cargo eight ridge hauler, uh, including underneath it as well. Uh, but what I, you can see here, I'm avoiding kind of the metal parts, mainly, uh, yeah, I'm not avoiding them on purpose, it's that I just don't need to focus on them on the metallics underneath because um, I'll focus on those a little bit later. Um, so all the parts that are going to be gray are given a, a good and decent base coat of gray here. And then just making sure that the coverage is decent enough that we don't have any of the black showing through because I do want it to actually be quite a light grey. Um, and the reason why we want it to be so light is because we're really going to knock this back with oils and weathering later on. Uh, we're going to use uh, Cadre grey or Kadir grey. I'm not sure which one you would describe it as. And this is going to be our highlight. We can be quite rough with this highlight. Um, but you can see how bright this grey actually is. And we're we're going to highlight it even further than this, as I say, because we're going to knock it back with oils a little bit later. Uh, so it's worth going lighter than you think you probably need to go. You can see I'm just doing this quite rough, this highlight, 
not being too precise with it. On the next layer, I'll be a bit more precise, uh, but you don't need any mad airbrushing skills to be able to do anything that we've done so far. It's all been fairly straightforward. You can see I'm kind of doing a similar thing as I did with the container, which I'm highlighting from the bottom, whereas with the container I shaded from the top, I'm highlighting from the bottom here to emphasize the lines uh, of, the, uh, of the ridge hauler. And then we're going to move on and we're going to combine Kadir Grey with Bleach Bone. And this is going to be a final highlight. This is a 50-50 mix, so it's uh, not quite white but it is certainly a very very bright gray or a light gray rather you can see here i'm just shading at the very bottom so i've got some transitions between the light and the dark a little bit of contrast between some of those panels as well uh, and that would be nice for when we do our kind of streaking and oil effects uh, but it just i think it just emphasizes the lines of the scope really nicely on this tank sorry on this uh this ritual i fall into the trap of calling it a tank over and over again But as I say, the reason why we highlight from the bottom is that it, there are some quite cool lines, some you know 90 degree angles, 45 degree angles, and we just want to emphasize those things because they look really, really nice. And we can do that just by emphasizing it with the, uh, with the airbrush and the way that we highlight. So this is what it looks like so far. It looks pretty cool. And then basically we're going to need to uh, knock this uh, back entirely. Um, but we are going to just pick out some red areas first. I really thought that it would be worthwhile um, just breaking up the gray on the tank. We've obviously got that massive um, yellow container, but I thought a third color uh, would look quite nice here. So I'm just picking out areas that uh, would look quite nice red. Um, and I'm not worrying too much here about the fact that um, I haven't got any kind of like sick fades on this red at all. I'm not masking it up. I'm using blood red speed paint. Um, so the transitions that I've created with the airbrush will still show through underneath. Um, it Because we've got flat panels, it will be, when it goes down, a little bit patchy. Uh, but that patchiness, by the time we're finished and by the time we're done, it will just disappear because we're going to use oils, we're going to use smoke effects, on, particularly on these areas here. Um, and we're going to use kind of like weathering as well on top of all that, some battle damage with the sponge, etc, etc. So if there is any patchiness here, that's okay because it will just be hidden underneath all the other layers of weathering that we're going to uh, we're going to create and i have tended to do the red around uh, vents that wasn't consciously that i did it but um i just thought that kind of it made made sense uh, at the time to do it around those areas right we're going to do transfers next so i've given all the parts of the model that i've airbrushed uh so not the wheels the wheels are at the moment uh, just just black but everything that i've airbrushed i've gloss varnished and the gloss varnish just allows us to apply the transfers easier than if we were to do it straight over the top of the model. Now, however you do your transfers is absolutely fine. This is how I do mine. So I gloss varnish first, then I obviously um, take the transfer off the, the backing of the paper that it comes on. You can just see in the corner a kitchen towel on a Tupperware container. So it's not floating around in water and I'm having to kind of you know fish for the transfer. And then I take some micro sol here and then, sorry, micro set, which is number one, the blue one, micro set. I lay that down and then apply the transfer over the top of it. And the micro set and the micro sol help it to set, obviously, and it helps it to flatten over the surface. And the reason why I use a gloss varnish is that there are no tiny little air bubbles underneath the transfer. So the transfer can lay down really, really smoothly as well. Uh, and what you can see me doing here, I'm just using a, a gray color and I'm just hitting it with a sponge and some transfers there on the on the transfer area, just to create the appearance that the um, the, the paintwork of the the numbers that we've put on are just starting to wear away as well. Dark stone, 
chipping. I take quite a big uh, bit of sponge here. And what we're going to do is we're going to sponge on all over those uh, edges, all over the uh, ridge hauler. We're going to sponge this dark stone on. Now, dark stone is a really excellent color to use on anything that's white, on anything that's uh, gray in particular. I find it's really, really nice to create some believable, uh, believable chipping. And particularly, we want to focus on all the edges here, places where um, the paintwork will be stripped away, places where people are walking on, standing on. You, know, you can see me focusing here on kind of the, the, the flatter surfaces where people would stand, um, but also on all the edges where the paintwork will be chipped away. Those are the bits where you really want to focus your sponge, uh, sponge chipping. But we're going to further enhance that. by using a little bit of brushwork in a moment. So you can see here I'm taking dark stone and what I'm doing is I'm going around on all the edges. I can be definitely rougher than I would be with say edge highlighting, uh, but just on the edges, not, not every single edge, but most of the edges, I'm just going around with this brush just made a mistake there. It's good if you gloss varnish it as well, because if you make a mistake, you can just take a wet cotton wool bud and just wipe it away. That's well, another good thing about a gloss varnish. And what you can see here, on all the edges, on all the panels, I'm just going around giving it a rough, very rough edge highlight. In fact, the rougher the better, I'd say, because uh, it just gives the appearance that kind of paint has been chipped away from those edges. And I find this, combined with sponge chipping, just makes it that much more believable. We're going to move to oak brown now. Oak brown is a really natural, nice chipping colour for yellow. Uh, obviously, we've got the contrast between the dark brown and then the yellow. So you can see I'm using different chipping for different uh, colours, which is usual. That I would usually do that anyway. Um, you might want to just stick to dark stone, but I just like the way that the oak brown plays off against the uh, yellow. And then you can see here I'm using all sorts of different motions with my sponging work. You know, trying to drag it along, trying to create scuffs and scratches, scuffings of the edges as well. Because we haven't done any edge highlighting. In fact, what we're doing really is negatively edge highlighting. We're using darker colours to edge highlight with a sponge and a bit of brushwork in order to pick out the edges which is something that you would usually see in kind of scale modeling techniques as well, but also means that I don't have to get, spend five, 10 hours just edge highlighting everything, which isn't a, a great use of time, I don't think, and, and doesn't take away from the, the overall look of the model as well. Right, we're gonna use our oil washes now. Now, um, I would give the model another gloss varnish using Army Painter's uh, gloss. And that just protects all the work that we've done so far. So all those edge, those kind of negative edge highlighting, all the sponging, all the transfers as well. And what you can see me doing here is creating an oil wash. And it's kind of got the consistency of milk. You can see how thin it is. And this is a mix of burnt umber and Payne's grey. And, you know, it's not quite black. It's not quite grey. It's something dirty in between that works quite nicely for, uh, for grey colours. And I'm going around on all the recesses, I'm going around on all the rivets, all the areas that kind of dirt, dirt would uh, be picked up. And this is very much how a known oil wash might work. You know, you're defining the model uh, with, a, with an oil wash here. Um, so it emphasizes rivets and all those lines that you wanna be able to see that we, we can't necessarily see from just airbrushing. Um, the great thing though about oils is we can be a bit slapdash with it because um, we can wipe it away and that's a great thing about using the gloss varnish as well. We can wipe it all away once we're finished uh, in a way that we couldn't say with a with a wash or non oil or something like that because the, the working time for oils is a lot longer. This is just straight up burnt umber as I said it that kind of like that oak brown color those browns works really nicely against the yellow and the same can be said for burnt umber as well burnt umber is a really nice color to be able to pin wash your uh, your yellows with and i would use this on imperial fists as well so if i'm pin washing imperial fist space marines for example this is exactly the kind of recipe and techniques that i would use uh, for my own imperial fist for my personal personal army 
Um, and the other thing about oils as well is that they kind of create in a way that washes don't necessarily uh, this kind of dirty, grimy build up as well, which is why you'll find them used quite a lot in scale modeling. So if you're looking to make the shift between sort of a heavy metal style, I would really start to learn and start to research about how to use oils. Uh, loads of videos out there, but I've done an awful lot about oils as well. And you can see how slapdash I'm being here. I'm just making sure it goes in all the nooks and crannies, but actually we're hitting places that you you couldn't do with a normal wash because I can I know in an hour's time when this is dried I can wipe it away and you'll see that in the next part of the video as well. So I'm taking some clean white spirit here just in a little Tupperware container and then I dip in a clean Cotwell bud or a Q-tip and going back to our, uh, our ridge hauler and I'm just wiping away all of the areas that I basically made mistakes on. And I'm using this kind of like downwards motion. And the benefit of doing a downwards motion is I'm starting to create streaks, rain streaks and things like that on top of what we're doing. Just incidentally, I'm not doing it on purpose necessarily. I'm not going, oh, I, I knew that this would be exactly what I would do before. But just by dragging it downwards, dragging it away and dragging it off i'm starting to create kind of streaks rain streaks grime streaks etc etc now we'll reinforce this a little bit later but it all adds to a melange of weathering that we want to create on these models now in terms of skill there's not been really a lot of skill this is not a high skill level uh, paint job but it certainly is procedural which is that you've got to follow the steps in order to create something that looks like the the cargo rate ritual that we saw right at the start of the video but anybody can do any of these techniques as long as they've got the right tools the right paints etc you know anybody's going to be able to achieve this and i think that's an important thing to say there's a difference i think personally between painting skill and then understanding painting processes and painting techniques i think this is just about practice not necessarily about having a high level of technical skill when it comes to your painting so this has been cleaned up uh, with a cotton wool bud and some clean white spirit and what I'm doing now is I'm using a mixture in fact not a mixture I'm just using some burnt umber straight up burnt umber here um, well, I'll use the oil paint mixture in a moment this is just straight up burnt umber and what I want to do is create the idea of a grime rust uh, and creating a lot of streaking mainly because this adds interest to the model um, but also uh, just because it also looks cool, right? And this is just another way that we can add interest to our to our tanks. I've got a fan brush here, and what I'm taking with this neat oil that I've put on at the top of panels, I'm just dragging this downwards and creating streaks. Now, the great thing about this is that if you mess it up, because it's all gloss varnished, we can wipe it away with the cotton wool bud and then do it again. So if you go wrong on this, it's fine. It's no, no problem at all. There's loads of working time in this, and I mess this up. Uh, all the time when I do it and I have to start again because um, I'm not happy with the way it looks. So, you know, just think actually if it goes down, we can always correct it. The thing about paint, once you put it down and it dries, it's just so much harder to correct these things, which is why oils are just, they're really user friendly. You see me going along here, just creating streaks. So I tend to put it in different places, tops of panels as well, and then drag it downwards to create that streaking. This works really nicely as well if you consider we did the shading at the top and then we're bringing the rush streaks at the top as well. It just further reinforces the highlights and the contrast and the panel modulation on uh, our, our, kind of our container. And by panel modulation, I just mean from light to dark on a panel. It's just a fancy way of saying it goes from light to dark. Think about consistency with your streaks as well. You know, you don't want to just do it on the side. You've got to do it on these top bits here, which are at a 45 degree uh, degree angle. But as you see, it's relatively simple using this fan brush. Uh, loads of companies that create fan brushes um, and they're just fat, flat brushes that are in the shape of a fan. That's all I mean by a fan brush. So we're going to use cadmium orange uh, mix and then uh, burnt umber here. And we're going to use a, around a 50-50 mix of this. So I want something that's more akin to rust than grime and dirt. 
against the grey. I could have just used burnt umber, but I just wanted to show you what another colour would look like on our uh, on our ridge hauler here, just to show you guys some various techniques. Now, because these uh, panels are slightly smaller, I'm just being a little bit more careful about where I place this. Uh, the panels that I need to get to are a little bit smaller as well. So it's just something to be mindful of. Um, and just consider, you know, when it rains, where the streaks and the grime would fall down, where streaks streaking and grime coming down panels will look good as well just consider that that's also something you need to consider within this so it's got to look realistic but it's also got to look good on the model you can just see me picking out a rivet there as well important to do rivets because that's re they're really nice places to create um kind of streaking from and exactly as we did with our container we're just dragging that fan brush down creating that streaking As I said before though, if something goes dramatically wrong and you're not happy with it, just wipe it away with a cotton wool bud and you can start again. That's the great thing about using uh, using oils. So, over to the tires. So we're gonna use buff titanium and burnt, uh, burnt umber again. So burnt umber is a color that we keep on coming back to is often a color that you know I use on every single project now I want to create kind of like a dusty light mud look that's dried on these um, on these tires I haven't airbrushed the tires I'm just going to keep them black so really really simple and the interest I'm going to add to them entirely comes from this mix I felt though that it wasn't light enough uh, so I would add two to one buff titanium to burnt umber until we get a color that looks like uh, kind of like this, which is light, you know, a light dirt color. You know, something to be mindful of when we think of mud. You know, we often think of mud being very, very dark brown because we often think of it being wet. Remember that actually, when if you look in your car, mud when it dries is often very, very light, much lighter than we might expect. And what you can see me doing here is just taking this and daubing it all over our tires to go into those nooks and crannies. And then that will just emphasize the lines of the tire. Uh, so I don't have to highlight them because the oils, the light oils are doing all the hard work uh, for me. So I have matte varnish this using Army Painters matte varnish. So that protects all the oils underneath and also gives it a really nice matte effect as well. And you can really see now all that streaking coming together. However, we've got all the boring job now of doing all the tiny little details and all the metallic work as well. But we will lay some more weathering on the top of this. So we're gonna use Broadsword Silver. Uh, it's a speed paint, but I really like the flow of this Broadsword Silver. Uh, color and it just mean, makes painting metallics just so much easier when a, you find a metallic paint paint that flows really really nicely uh, it just makes a world of difference rather than having to go back and forward all the time to your uh, to your palette something that flows well is just really useful especially when you're doing kind of boring jobs like this which is just blacking out or blocking in uh, kind of just massive amounts of uh, massive amounts of silvers so anywhere that's silver will get hit with this broadsword silver speed paint and you can just see just to mix it up a little bit on this uh, cargo uh, container um, I would just recommend just the skulls I mean you could pick out some other places if you want but just the skulls I think are enough just to um, create some rust effects a little bit later so mindful of everything in terms of actually I want some rust effects here here and here and that's where I'm going to place the silver uh, we're going to use strong tone so strong tone is basically um, the equivalent of old devlin mud uh, the positive thing about these kinds of washes is that they don't they don't uh, dry super matte so the metallics that they go over aren't going to be completely and utterly uh, knocked back uh, because of the fact we've used a wash over them, which is a tendency I find with Games Workshop washes, is that, you know, in terms of metallics, they really knock the metallics back, whereas this actually still maintains the luster of the metallics underneath. Not that after we do all the rust effects, we need too much luster to the metallics, uh, but just something useful to uh, useful to know. So put this strong tone all over um, our um, metallic areas. And then just the inside of the tyres here, 
just paint with that broadsword silver color and then we'll need to follow that up by um, hitting it with a strong tone as well. So molten orange and oak brown, we're gonna mix those two uh, together and we're gonna start creating some quite cool rust effects now. Now, we're gonna keep things nice and simple. Remember, you know, this video is really aimed at those people who are just starting out on weathering. You know, even if you're a veteran weatherer, this is, will be useful for you, but I just wanna make the techniques nice and easy. And what you can see me doing here is just sponging on, essentially, kind of rust effects. So we've got the metallics underneath, uh, and we've got variation and we've got areas starting to rust up, but we've got areas that are also can you can see the metallic underneath it as well. Um, and this is a great way to kind of create some quite cool rust effects. Not saying necessarily realistic rust effects, but I think quite cool rust effects. So put this all over the areas that you've painted silver. And then we're going to use some dry rust effects here from the army painter and what i'm going to do is i'm going to mix this with some airbrush thinner now army painters airbrush thinner has some flow improver in it now what that means is that it will obviously help the flow so we don't get this horrible coffee stain over all our uh, um, uh, models when we use this so that's why i really like mixing this to create washes so airbrush thinner from army painter with a little bit of flow improver mixed in really worth uh, getting a hold of and then what you can see me doing here is it looks super bright, but it will be, it will knock back so much. It will dry way darker than this. So don't panic when you're going, oh my gosh, that looks so orange. So I'm just daubing this all over our kind of rusty areas. And this creates different tones and variations in the rust. You know, rust, when you look at it in real life, isn't just one tone. We've created one tone with our sponging. Uh, now we need to create different kinds of tone by using a lighter rust uh, kind of uh, rust wash here. And I'm not just, though, using this on the metallic areas. I'm picking out rust areas that I think actually, you know, here would be a good place for us. Here would be a good place for us. Maybe there's some exposed metal uh, underneath the actual kind of hull of the of the ridge hauler where we've started to create rust as well. Or we've got wires, metallic wires that are starting to kind of, um, where it's rained, sort of leak rust onto those, uh, those pipes and things. So just think about good opportunities to show off your rust effect and put them all over the cargo weight ridge hauler. Be, um, with the metallics, you can afford to just put it all over. When you're putting it on the gray areas, I think just um, be careful about putting it into the nooks and crannies is what I would say. And exactly the same, we treat all the metallics the same, uh, including the tires as well. I thought this would be a great area for uh, rust where the uh, the feet of people dealing with the, the ridge hauler basically worn it away to metal and then rust started to kind of form um, on these areas. It just adds some further interest to our model and you can see me just reinforcing uh, different areas where I think there would be rust build up or reinforcing further rust build up where I've already done it before. Remember, it looks really bright here uh, because you know it's as light as it can possibly go because it's wet, but actually this will dry so much darker in, in once uh, in you know, in about ten minutes time. I think good places to put these in is obviously in kind of nooks and crannies areas where we've done our dark stone chipping as well you can see here i'm just f focusing on areas um, in between panels as well rather than necessarily on the flats of the panels we're going to use shining silver and we're just going to give this some final very light definition with some shining silver and a dry brush on some of the edges and this is where basically the rust has been knocked away, knocked back uh, to the original underlying metal underneath. And that's why it's good to define and add, add highlights like this, but this is essentially what it's simulating, where the, the oxidation has been knocked off on the edges of a, of a particular part, and then you can see the, the metal underneath it. But most important, I think, for definition more than anything else that we, we go through this process. And then I've glued it. So I've used super glue on the tires, not 
uh, plastic glue because there you've obviously got paint in the way which will uh, stop a bond from necessarily forming and then um, I've just placed the the container into the the ridge hauler but not glued it in because I might want to take it out at some point and then we're going to do some sooty uh, sooty effects here and going back to that red that we talked about actually it didn't matter so much here that um, it was a bit patchy because we, you know, we've covered it up with rust effects, covered it up with oils, covered it up with chipping, and now we're further covering it up with some kind of sooty effects where um, you know, these vents might create smoke. And this is just grim black speed paint straight through the airbrush here. And you can reinforce uh, that if you want to, but just look for the vents down at the bottom as well. Uh, where there would be a build up of uh, build up of smoke, you could do it on the container, but I kind of thought that those kind of container hatches were less smoke areas and more places for oxygen to get into. And then finally, what I've done, taking the original um, mix that we had that we used on our uh, tires, which was buff titanium burnt umber. And what I wanted to do is just create some kind of build up of dust effects here. So I've gone, I've reinforced it over the tires. Um, so just added a little bit more, just slopped it all on. Um, and then I've also put it on the bottom of the ridge hauler as well, just to show a, a build up of um, a build up of dust and grime. And then we'll leave those to dry. We can obviously hair dry them if we want to. Um, but I think that buildup of dust is really, really important. I felt that there wasn't enough before, um, so I think I yeah, to further had to enhance it. And just make sure it's not pooling at the bottom of a tyre like it just was there, uh, because yeah, tyres move around in circles so it wouldn't build up in, uh, in particular areas. And here it is. It's all finished. It's done. This is what our Cargo 8 Ridge Hauler looks like. Uh, and I hope that half an hour, quite a long video for me actually, I hope that video has been useful. You can use loads of these techniques on all kinds of uh, tanks, but not, well, very little edge highlighting and the, hedge, the edge highlighting I did do was very, very rough. Um, and, uh, you know, this, if you did this, it would take you no time at all. A couple of hours, lots of fun and a bit messy as well. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did manage to get all the way to the end, make sure that you give me a subscribe, make sure you leave a comment and I shall see you on the next one. Take care guys.